In this video, I'm going to build a custom PCB based on the schematic that I created in my previous video for the popular Cloudlifter CL1 microphone activator. Links to all the videos in this series will be listed in the description below. To create the PCB, we will use some open source software called KiCad, spelled K-I-C-A-D. If you aren't into the whole CAD design aspect of this project, feel free to skip to the fourth video where we actually assemble a mic activator using the board that was designed in this video series. Before we can start laying out our PCB, we need to run the footprint assignment tool so we can tell KiCad which footprint to use for each of the schematic symbols. On this screen, you select your symbol in the middle table and then filter for the footprint with the search box at the top and the results on the right. Our first two symbols are for 1206 surface mount capacitors, so let's search for capacitor underscore SMD and then scroll down in the results to find the one that says 1206 3216 metric. Double clicking it sets that footprint for the selected schematic symbol and advances your selection to the next symbol. Since the next one is also a capacitor, I can just double click the same footprint again. For our input and output headers, I'm searching the footprint libraries on the left for the right name. Ah, there it is, connector underscore pin. Since I'm selecting a specific library, I can clear out my search and just view all the footprints for that library. I actually want the connector pin that's for the 2.54 millimeter spacing of the pins. Pretty standard for header pins. Now I can find the footprint that says 1x3, which means one row, three pins. And I'm just using vertical pins. To find the LSK389, I'm going to deselect the option to filter footprints by library and search all footprints, and just search for the LSK389. There it is. You can see how it finds both the through hole and surface mount footprints. Sometimes it's helpful to right click and view the footprint. Here's the surface mount footprint and now the through hole footprint. We will select the surface mount one. For our resistors, we can search for resistor underscore SMD and look for the 1206 3216 footprint. Now we can blast through and associate that footprint with the rest of our symbols. All right, on to the fun part. You can switch over to the PCB editor by clicking the green button at the top right. We can import our footprints based on our schematic with the update button. Clicking update PCB will bring in all of our footprints. Later on, if you end up changing something in the schematic, you can just run through this flow again and it will update the footprints on the PCB. Here are all of our footprints. The first thing I like to do is adjust all of the labels so things are less messy when we position parts close to each other. For this specific board, I want to put the reference symbol in the center of the footprint and include the values on the silk screen. Typically, values aren't included on the silk screen and the reference symbol, if included at all, would be next to the part, not under it. I just think this saves space and might help newbies who are checking out this project. I want to design this PCB to be as small as possible so I can see if I can fit it into a small case. Many of the same keyboard shortcuts from the schematic editor also apply in the PCB editor. M for move, R for rotate, E for edit, that sort of thing. I want to get all of my components as close together as possible while not being too close to potentially cause electrical issues or solder bridging. I definitely want to get those capacitors as close to the JFET pins as possible. Drawing traces is hands down my favorite part. For this build, I'm trying to keep everything on one side of the board, so sometimes routing traces is sort of like a puzzle. If you need to put traces on the other side, you connect the two sides by placing what is called a via. This is a hole that gets drilled through the board and coated with a layer of copper, effectively connecting both sides. Many PCB editing tools offer what's called an auto router, where it routes the traces for you. I don't recommend using this because it can route your traces in really bizarre ways. Pretty much everyone manually routes their traces as far as I know. Who knows what the future holds with AI though, right? Okay, our layout's looking pretty good. Now we have to define the edges of the board by drawing a border around the board on the edge cuts layer and use the line drawing tool to draw a border around our components. One thing we haven't done yet is connect our ground connections. There are a few ways of doing this, but in the spirit of the Cloudlifter CL1, I want to create a ground rail around the perimeter of the board. I can accomplish this by selecting an option to add a filled zone 
and drawing the area that I want to be filled on the front copper layer. I want to disable thermal reliefs because my ground rail is going to pass through pads on some of my components and I want it to make a totally solid connection. Pressing B on the keyboard will update any filled zones that we've created. So far this puts copper across the whole top layer of the board while keeping a small space between components and traces so nothing shorts out. Since I want this to be just a rail around the edge, I'm going to create a keep out zone that is configured to only block copper fills. Now I can press B and it will update my filled zone and respect the keep out zone that we just created. After a few adjustments, we have a uniform rail around the whole board that we can connect our ground pads to. Oh, I made a mistake. Let's select that ground fill and press E for edit. I forgot to select what connection this ground fill represents. In our case, we want this to be connected to ground, so I'll select the GND net for ground. Now if I hit B, it will update our filled zones. We can run the design rule checker to validate that we haven't made any mistakes. Hey look at that, no issues. One final thing is I think we should add some labels onto the silkscreen for our pin numbers so we don't mix anything up when attaching the XLR connector. This is as easy as selecting our header pin footprint, hitting E, and adding our new labels on the silkscreen layer. Then we can position the labels nicely next to the pins. We can take a look at what our board will actually look like by selecting the 3D viewer option under the view menu. Not bad, so should we actually have one of these boards made? Why not, right? We need to export our board in a format called Gerber. The screen to do this can be accessed by clicking on the plot button on the upper left of the screen. I recommend selecting an output directory at the top of the screen that pops up so all your generated files go into a new folder instead of the main project folder. I'm just calling mine Gerber and adding the date. This export screen looks really confusing, but for what we're doing, all we need to do is leave all the default options and just click the plot button and the generate drill files button. Don't forget to click both. Then navigate to your Gerber folder on your file system and compress it into a zip file. I'm going to have my board made at oshpark.com. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but I've used them several times and I've been super happy. Just drag and drop your Gerber zip file onto their website and they will start processing the data for your project. The first screen that they show you gives you a view of your board and the cost to have three of them manufactured. This board that we just created only costs $4.20 US, and you get three of them. The screens that follow show you different views of your board layers so you can validate that everything was interpreted as expected, so there's no surprises when you receive your boards. Oshpark has a few additional options that you can select, but the only one I've ever used is the Swift service option to receive my boards faster. For this board, that adds an additional $4. Alright, well that's it for this one. Hope to see you in the next video where we put this board to use. Catch you next time! <music>